Well, I got my hands on that book, and that's where my style began. And how has your style changed throughout the years? It has changed. I think when I was um, younger, when I was really young, uh, say in this, uh, you know, what really influenced me was Twiggy. Uh, you know, Twiggy, for one thing, came from poor background. And, of course, she was a twig. And I've never been fat, but no one looked like Twiggy. And she and Jean Shrimpton, the famous model, and the, the two ladies who did the Revlon uh, lipstick ads, Dorian Lee and her sister Susie Parker, I wanted to look like them. But I did grow up when you wore long hair, looked more like Bette Midler, and long, those Indian dresses you'd buy, and this and that. And at some point, I did look like that. And at some point then, I went immediately into the 60s and wore the short skirts and the short pants and this and that. But at some point, this I guess is what's interesting, I did switch, that I didn't follow the group. And it became a, a famous guy, a, a famous, wonderful, gay young man uh, called Lance Loud. His family was part of a thing called An American Family. It was the first realist show on TV where they did the family and made it like a sitcom. He was this wild, gay young man. He said, honey, I'm going to show you how to dress. And he brought me from California, um, I don't know what era, probably it was a 40s jacket, black, with the little fur collar, and I never turned, I never went back to what's known as ordinary clothing. I would no more buy something from the Yellow Bean catalog than I'd take heroin. And I just always, I've always done vintage, retro, and now that I'm, I think, officially getting older, I do what I call my uniform, in that I know I look fabulous in cashmere sweaters. And I wear men's jackets, always men's jackets. And you can find them in thrift shops. And I have good men's jackets. Can there. you show me a few? Sure. Okay. This is a wonderful jacket. And you know what this... Can you get me standing up? Yeah. This, this is a bagpiper's jacket. This is... I love this jacket. This is... If you look at it, it has horn bones. These are from deer. This is horn from their horns. Wow. Now, a lot of people find this creepy. I don't. Uh, I've lost one here, and there's one here I've lost two. But what makes it a bagpiper, look at the way it's cut. It's here, down at the front. But it's shorter in the back. Hmm. And it's kicked out. Because bagpipers, they're wearing kilts. And it would have to walk with a man wearing kilts. And so it kind of swings somewhat. I love this jacket. And where did you um, come up with the idea for a uniform? I had at some point read in... Uh, I could, it must have been Vogue. I, I, we'll say it's Vogue. Uh, an interview with uh, Jeffrey Bean. And I've always liked his... I love Jeffrey Bean and I love Bill Blass's designers, contemporary designers. They're both gone, but nonetheless. Uh, and Jeffrey Bean talked about that he thought the best way to dress is wear a uniform. And he himself always looked like a priest because he had the black shirt and black, 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 black. And it dawned on me that if you get a look and a way to be comfortable, because I dress at 9 o'clock in the morning. I look like this. And I don't go to an office. I go out for breakfast, and I come back and I work. But I'm wearing cashmere. These are British. These are shooting pants. What Prince Charles or whatever wear out in the fields with the, with the green hunter boots. Yeah. This is what they wear. And I buy this in London. And so I kind of look the same all the time with variations. Like... I love this jacket. This is one of my other favorite jackets. This is another man's tweed jacket. Wow, and what a wonderful pin. With two pins together. Oh. This is from a really down and out thrift shop in Dublin. And I love this jacket because 
it, it, well, if we saw it in the, really in the sunlight, there's a bit of a green twill in it. It reads black, but it's many, many colors because it's this fabulous, heavy, made to be worn in the rain man's jacket. And it's big enough that I can button it. And the pins, there's two pins. This is a very good rhinestone brooch that I got from an old lady friend of mine who died. And I love this. But the bottom thing, I put the two together. This is wax. This is those 1920 uh, cassages that ladies wore. Most likely this would have been done on a uh, evening gown. Maybe on the shoulder. And maybe there was uh, a bow with it. So I put the two together. And so the thing is with a uniform is that this may look like a ratty man's tweed jacket. And it is. But I make it marvelous by mm -hmm. wearing jewelry or a great scarf. And does it make you feel uh, like you're doing something that no one else is doing? Is Absolutely. That anything? Yeah. And you know what it is? I travel a great deal. Uh, not just to Ireland, but my husband and I go... We love the Middle East, actually. We just were in Lebanon for three weeks. God help me. I hope it'll be all right. I love Lebanon. I get far looking like this. I am at an airport and I stand out and I find that people will look at, well they'll look at me of course because I, you know, the way I look, but they'll look at the brooch or they'll look at something I piece accessory and they will smile. And I find that gets me through a lot going through airports. Yeah. It sure does. And it gets you a lot through life. <laughs> it does. And I, I, you know, more people should do it. Yeah, part of what I found out is when we dress up, not only does it make us feel good, but it makes other people makes feel other good. It makes other people feel good. I mean, I'll show you one thing. I don't have it on right now, but... I sometimes, this is, I wouldn't have it on. Like, this is an artificial rose mm -hmm. bought in London. I sometimes will just wear the rose. A no Beautiful. pin. Beautiful. And people, you know, customs people, the guy searching you. It's little touches. They smile. And that's that's part of the style, don't you know? Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, you're welcome.